Miss Weaver, what's in the box? Well, let's find out. I had a request from a couple of different people. I wanted to know what's inside one of these helicopters. This one, as you see on the side of it, is a Trek 600. It's made by the Align Company. And uh, this one's a 3D helicopter. What 3D means is that, you know, of course, three dimensional. But it just means that it can fly upside down and right side up. Whoa! No, seriously, you totally can. So, um, the way that this one's set up, I'm going to turn on the radio and give you a little demonstration of Wasawa. So, as you're looking at it, you've got three different servos. You know, what the servos are is these little motors that you have here. And there's a bajillion little gears in there. In actuality, it's probably only about eight or nine. And a little electric motor that drives them. So you've got your radio. This is a DX6i. It's like kind of the minimum requirement that you need to do helicopters. You're better off with a seven or something else. Uh, but you can put ten different models on here. That's what that ten models is about there. So this is set up for the 600. And what we'll do is we'll turn on the BEC. You can see that this battery is disconnected. There's no power there. So you just switch on your BEC. When it has LEDs, light emitting diodes, across the top, and those just indicate your charge level of your BEC battery. Well, this is your BEC battery. I don't want to screw it up pulling it out with one hand, but anyway, you got a little bit, a little battery down here. It's a little two cell, and it, you see everything's awake and alive and happy. You see those servos moving. There's one on each side. There's one here. There's one on the back side. And then there's another one that's exact same match, same batch, same everything to run this. So you can see that there's a, I don't know if you can see, let's look at the back of this critter. Looking back here you can see that one. Now when I push up and down on this, see how it tips, this is a swash plate. It tips the swash plate forward and backward. And what that does is it makes the blades pitch in appropriation to where you're moving the control. So when I move this one this way, it makes the helicopter pitch down. It makes the blades everything. The way that does that is it makes this front blade, it's not moving because just the paddles move, but the paddles actually work like power steering to hold this still so that it makes the blades pitch. And what it does is it makes the blade pitch just before down, just before it gets through here, and that pushes the helicopter down and it makes the one on this side, this blade, pitch just before it gets here, it pitches up. So it actually lifts the back of the helicopter up. So it's actually a push-pull mechanism on the rotor shaft here to make it move. So that's three servos that I've introduced you to, and those are your uh, means of control on the helicopter. So you can go side to side, you can go front and back, and those three work in concert through the programming in the radio. Now the next one, the last servo, we've got four total on this one. You'll have more if you have landing gear and all that other kind of stuff. Say you have an Augusta A109 or what, A119 or something. But the last one is a specialized servo. And it'll always be a digital servo on your tail for the modern ones. Uh, this one's got the Align digital servo. It says Coreless. Uh, motor. This is a DS620. It's a really high-speed servo and the reason why you have to have such a high-speed servo is that it's driven by your gyro. Gyro? What's a gyro? Well, my gyro is down under here. It's just GP780 and uh, it's an aligned gyro but basically it's got little sensors that sense whether the helicopter is moving this way or this way. So I'll show you why that's significant. Movie here camera's running out of batteries but watch this move side to side as I move this that moves too and that's because of the gyro it corrects and counters for that also when you move the stick side to side it does it now before this battery dies because I don't want to edit let me introduce you to the rest of the electronics now you've got a motor here and the motor runs on what's called a speed control so as we come over here, the speed control is, it's like the throttle butterfly on a carbureted vehicle. It basically uh, works out so that you get the right amount of speed to the motor. So this is your speed control, and the speed control goes directly to the motor, and it also goes directly to your battery. 
So once you hook this up, then your throttle will work and you'll be able to spool the helicopter up. Now this is the receiver that talks to this, this antenna and this one go here. But then there's also a satellite wire and this is your satellite receiver. So that's about all the electronics on this critter. And of course you got your electric motor and then from your receiver you've got wires going to each of these different servos and then you also have a wire that goes to your uh, speed controller and uh, that's your battery. Now I got LiPo battery, I've got this little teeny, uh, teeny tiny 40C lithium polymer battery, it's a 1900 milliamp hour, it's a two cell. It's like two batteries wired together in series. This one is a six cell, it's really high output, it's also 40C and uh, you know with the six cell you get a lot of power output to the motor. So that's the tour of the guts of the helicopter. The rest is just structure. It's just aluminum and carbon fiber all over the place.